What's going on ladies and gentlemen, we are back again with another 600 pound life video and this one is Lisa's journey episode 14 season 10 Now with that being said shout out to every single person that is a member of the channel and now let's get into this one Ooh we 51 years of age and she's over 600 pounds how she's made it to that far. I have no idea, but hey, let's get into it I say I get up every morning, except for the fact that I can't get up out of this bed. It's been about three years that I've been in bed. Randy, Randy's trying to get up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it makes me feel because I can't do anything. Raw! Her skin isn't looking good at all! No! You can't be doing that! I'm sorry, but that's just that. Nah, you can't be doing that. Oh dear, this this is this is gonna be one hell of a freaking journey. Wow. How you know what? Let me not say anything now. Let me just get into it. Because I can't do anything. Oh I hate being here. I hate being in this house. Because I hate being stuck in a house. I hate myself. I just feel like I've let myself down and everybody around me. <laughs> I live with my boyfriend Randy. And I just feel like crap because we're not really boyfriend girl for he's more like my caregiver. For the three years I say it all the time and I'm gonna I'll say it, I say it, I say it all the time I'm gonna say it again how people in these positions have a partner is beyond me <laughs> I just can't <laughs> if you're single right now and you're in a better position in life and you're wondering why I don't have the answer for you maybe just become <sighs> anyway let me let me just get into it man it's just, it's just whatever man Jesus Oh, Randy does basically everything for me. Babe, I'm getting hungry. And most of the time, he does all the cooking. Wish I could help out a lot more. I know Randy wants that. Poor guy. I miss simple things like mopping a floor. He just says he does it out of love. Sometimes cut your keys. No, stop, 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 stop. Come on, come on. She, did she just say poor guy? Oh, uh, Randy's my well, Randy's my boyfriend, but he's basically become my caretaker. He has to get up and do the cooking. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> Why is she saying it? Like, that's what I should be saying. That's what we should be saying. We should be saying poor guy, and then the, anything else we want to add on to that. But it, instead, she's saying, "Do you know what? I'm calling it now. This woman is highly, highly, highly manipulative." Calling it now, I swear to God. The fact that she she acknowledges that he's that 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 he's in a very nah nah nah. She's manipulative as hell. Let's okay okay cool. Let's let, okay okay. Makes me upset because I don't want her eating that stuff, but I don't want to make her mad, so I give it to her. Lisa gets upset all the time because she wants to get up out of bed, do things, and she starts crying. It makes me upset because I love her with all my heart. Sometimes I hug her, and other times I tell her Lisa it'll be okay. I her make a cheerleader. When you turn food for comfort, it's like your best friend. You know, you can eat it and you can cuss while you're in and tell them everything you're doing and it's not going to talk back to you and it's not going to judge you. Food makes you feel good while you're eating it. Makes you happy. But then by the time you're done, you feel so guilty. It's like it wasn't worth it. For eating all that food because you know that food's killing you. You know how bad it is. It's absolutely terrible. And food becomes your best friend. It's your only friend. But it's always there. I mean, I've tried, like, not eating so much and stuff like that, but I'm a stress eater. So whenever I'm stressed out or something, I eat. I'm just a stressful person. <laughs> Babe, don't put that in the kitchen for me. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I can't watch this episode. This this woman's gonna do it. <laughs> I can't watch this episode. But I'm gonna flip out. I have to laugh it off. Otherwise, I'm gonna flip. She is not being serious. The way she's nah. Oh. <laughs> uh, Lisa. Oh, okay. Who? who we up? Uh, you know what? Dolly was bad. Dolly was bad. She was delusional and bad. This woman right here, she's a different ball game. She's co she's covered both aspects. She's like, food is my is is everything to me, but food is also the thing that's killing me. So she knows both ends of the scale. So she analyzes from both aspects. Thoroughly. Sometimes, you know, it feels like they all do it, but like the way she's going about it with the description. 
Wow. Okay. Cool. 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 Okay. This woman. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I feel bad because sometimes my bed gets wet, and then we have to change the bedding. You know, it's kind of stressful. I have to use the bathroom. I have stress on my body. We have to change the bedding. So yeah, I'm stressed a lot. And then if it's bath time, we'll take a bath. Yeah. Get some soap and grab some. Wash my legs and wrench them off. It's a long process because we have to wash and then I have to dry everything. Get the disc. I've always wanted to lose weight. I just never knew how to lose weight. Nobody wants to be like this. And if they do, they're crazy. I've always enjoyed food. I don't know why, but I always have. I think it's been a family thing, you know. All of us are overweight. Lisa and I are two years apart. We grew up together pretty good, but growing up, we never really recognized Lisa's weight because all of us was heavy back then, except for Robin, the other sister. Growing up, my life was chaotic. First, he was a real good dad when we were younger, but then he got into drinking and started beating on my mom and everything. So, just that situation there made me turn to food. Food became a comfort to me because whenever I got upset or afraid or lonely, I knew it'd be there. But then, after my dad left, my mom went to work. She cleaned things. She did whatever she could to take care of us. And as kids, we used to spend a lot of time home alone. Go do whatever we want to do. Cry and eat. When I was 13, life changed a lot. I was at a friend's house. People I thought were friends. I was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. And I got raped. And it just happened. There's two different guys. I never told a soul. But I need my mom. And I started eating a lot after that. I know I did. I did it on purpose because I wanted to get back so nobody ever touched me again. Maybe feel lonely, afraid, wonder why things happen. And where in the hell was God? I got to drinking then, drinking and partying. Falling the crowd, probably about 300 pounds. I met Matthew's dad when I was 16, Terrence. Yo, TLC are just, oh, they're wrong for this, man. TLC are just so wrong for this. She's talking about how she got here, right? And she talks about, you know, obviously the situation that happened to her when she was younger. But in the whole time, she's sitting there eating a whole plate of just pizza, Doritos. I don't know. Like, I mean, look, look, look at it right now. Like, the, the whole thing nearly gone. That whole thing was stacked up. You know what I mean? Nico Carter type, 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 right? And she's talking about what, what, what got her here. You know what I mean? And obviously, you know, uh, no one should have to go through what she went through. You know what I mean? Because that's something that, that, does, that does happen more often than none. But to, the grand scheme, it should never happen, period. You know what I mean? But... It is something that is growing a whole lot more, but that's something that happened to obviously a very, 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 very long time ago, okay? And I do understand that everybody, you know, um, gets through things in different ways, but the fact is she's 51 years of age now. 51 years of age now. She should have turned her life around a good 20, 20, 30 years ago now, okay? If not more than that, because, because the fact is, you know, this happened to her when she was a child, you know what I mean? And... Some people may feel like you, some people may be like, oh, you can't comment on it, you can't say this, you can't say that. But the fact is, I am commenting on it and I will say what I gotta say because I can. <laughs> but this is the grand scheme of things, okay? The fact is, this happened to her a very, very long time ago when she was a kid. She's now 51 years of age and she's saying that at the time when it happened, she gained weight so people wouldn't touch her. Okay, cool. I understand that 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 perspective, okay, why she went in that in that direction, but. She's no longer a kid anymore. She's 51 now. And since then, she's had partners, okay? So the fact that she's had many opportunities to turn her life around in terms of her health, she's continued putting her health on the line. And for me, myself in particular, you may come at me for saying this, but the fact is there's, there, there, there is a chain of events with every single one of these people that come on this episode, and they always have a reason of why they've been unable to lose weight or a reason why they lost weight but then gained it up again. There's always a reason, which therefore translates into an excuse. So, and obviously in this situation, I don't want to say it's an excuse per se, but she's using something that happened to her such a long time ago as a reason to why she's where she's at now at 51 years of age. At what point in life do we pick ourselves up from our trauma and say, do you know what? We can't allow our traumas to hold us back anymore. Because as far as I'm concerned, there's a lot of people in this world that use certain things that happen to them as a tool to not want to do better, has a tool to why people should sympathize with them. This woman right here, 
is 100% a narcissist. This woman right here is 100% a manipulative human being without a shadow of a doubt. And she's the kind of person that will bring up something that happened to her so long ago, over again and again, has a reason of why she's in the way she, why, there's a reason why she's what she is the way she's at now, and probably why she treats people the way she treats them. We haven't got that far, but I, I'm already seeing it. I'm already seeing it. You know what I'm saying? 51. It's not like she's, it's not like she's like 20, 25, you know what I mean? You know, see where she's got, that, where, where that's that time where maybe you should now start to really seek therapy. You should start now start seeking help. You know what I mean? Give or take. She's 51, ladies and gentlemen. Someone, the fact is, someone in life should have said to her, listen, we know what happened to you, but you need to get your shit together. You need to now pick yourself up. Because the way you're living ain't it. 300, 300, no, 337 pounds at age 51. Look at her skin. It is completely torn up. The pain she was going through when, the, when her guy, caretaker, was trying to look after. No, 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 no. She needs to drop this whole thing in terms of using that as a tool. If anything, she should be using that experience as a way to educate others on maybe what they can do if something that like happens to them and how they can also move forward from it, not how they can use it as a tool to just ruin their lives like this. Because it creates a chain of events. It means that she's then gonna influence other people around her to 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 to, to end up like her. Do you know what I'm saying? Everything everything has a everything has a cycle. <sighs> anyway, that's just my opinion, whether you like it or not. But of course I'm open to you guys and you you guys telling me otherwise. I'm just telling you that listen man like we can't live a life where we keep using certain things in our lives to, to bring us down. We have to pick ourselves up at some point. And she's 51 years of age. 50. Get the hell out of here, man. Come on, man. Shit. Not long ago, we had a pretty good relationship. And then I found out I was pregnant. My sister just found out she was pregnant with her second child. Oh, it was not good for my mom living in a house with two pregnant girls. Because <laughs> we was crabby all the time. And then we still lived with our mom after we had the boys for a while. What am I going to do with a baby? I'm 17. I can't take care of myself. He had colic real bad. He cried 24-7. So it was hard. Me and Terrence and never married, but we kind of got thrown together for a while. My first marriage. What, 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 this is another thing. All this, uh, I don't know how all of these people who are completely, extremely obese, right? One, have partners. Two, have children. And then three, have the audacity, audacity to ignore their responsibility to having children. The fact is this, having a child should be everyone's reason, everyone's reason to why they're doing better with themselves, to why they decided to pick themselves up so they could be the best role model possible to their child. Not parent, role model, there's a difference. Yeah, you can be a parent and be overweight, you know what I'm saying? You can be an amazing parent and be overweight. Then let's not say that that's not a thing, 100%. But being a role model is two different things. How you present yourself, how you look after yourself, that display that you you know what I mean like how you present yourself how you look after yourself is you being almost your child if you, if you show your child that you can get up every day be nice and strong and you can look after your health or you can go out with them whenever they or you can go to the park with them and run longer than they can give or take you know what I'm saying you can play around in them all day you know what I'm saying like <sighs> anyway Anyway, anyway, that's just my that's just that, that's just my thoughts. Sorry, this this one's this one's got under my skin already. I, I I'm not gonna lie about that. Okay. He was in prison for murder. We started dating after he went to prison. He was young when he killed the guy. They robbed a mall and accidentally shot him. At the time, it didn't bother me. And when he got out, it just didn't turn out very well. It was good the first, you know, three months he was out. But then he got to drinking and using a lot of drugs. Thought it was okay to talk to me and hit on me and stuff like that. I picked him up one time and body slammed him. I said, you're not going to put your hands on me. I said, no man's ever going to put their hands on me again. And then he tried again. I called the cops and had him removed. I sent him back to the penitentiary. And I went and seen him. I said, you might just file for a divorce because we're not staying married. And he disappeared for two weeks and I didn't see him. I'm just going to skip forward. Then there was Homer. I was 19. That was a good relationship, but he was on drugs, so we broke up. Well, then there was Charles. I dated him for a couple years. I was 21. I dated him. We broke up because we just fought a lot. And then there was Harry. And I was like 22 then, I think. Harry was a good guy, he was really sweet. But he was a womanizer, he had to have three or four different girlfriends at one time, I couldn't deal with that. With Harry, things started getting hard because it was just too hard for me to go and do things. 
That was about 10 years back. And then I got with Randy. I met Randy at the grocery store at age 40. He came up and started talking to me. Gave him my phone number. And I've been with Randy ever since. I don't think I was attracted to Randy when I first met him. I think he just grew on me. He was just so sweet and kind. So basically, in the grand scheme of things, let's keep it 100 here. So basically, over the years of her life, she's had to have men around her. She, she's had to be in a relationship. She's basically on. She's never been able to live a life without being in a relationship. That's just the grand scheme of things. So, because she needs someone that she can manipulate, basically. Someone that she can obviously rely on and, and that person can do everything for her. But understand, she, she didn't get to this way by herself. She had people feeding her. Facts. People doing what, what they want, what, what she wanted them to do. Facts. I didn't like Randy to begin with, but he grew on me. What? Nah, he didn't grow on you. You, you, you. She just wanted him so she can just use it. But whatever it is, this is whatever, it is. whatever it is. What stood me about Lisa's her personality. She was fun and beautiful. I love everything about Lisa. I miss her being there with me. That's how I feel about that. I we used to go to the park and she'd hold her on the back of her wheelchair and she'd walk around on that. We used to go fishing all the time. She'd go to the store with me. She'd go to the doctors with me. I do feel lonely all the time when I go out. She can't go with me, especially when I go to the doctor and you're there for support. And my biggest hope and dream for her is to get up in bed and let's go do stuff and eventually get married. About eight, nine years, Ryan and I spent a lot, a lot of time going places and doing things. We were never home. Most of the time I'm covered up and I really didn't even, you know, look at myself. I don't really think I ever really noticed it until my legs and feet and stuff started hurting so bad. And Matthew said, Mom, you're getting fat. <laughs> Brandy, we put them in the kitchen, huh? Uh, doctor told me if I stood on my ankle, it was gonna puncture the skin. The bones are gonna go through my skin. Started staying in bed. I never got out of bed. By that time, I know I had to weigh about 600. Been here ever since. My boyfriend Randy has to do a lot for me. I feel bad, but it's not fair to him. He shouldn't have to come home with clean shift and say he's gonna get tired and leave. He's never told me that, but I don't know. If it was tables or turn, I'd get tired of it. Randy takes really good care of Lisa. He's here for her and he helps her, he bows her, helps her with her blisters on her legs and stuff. Worry about something happening to him. Then who's going to be here to take care of Lisa? Well, bring me the sour cream and I'll mix it in this then. You know, the last three years on him has been hell. He's had to take care of me and, you know, I regret letting this happen. I want to lose the weight. Hey, babe, come grab this stuff, will you? I feel like a caretaker here, a boyfriend, some of the times. It's kind of frustrating. I think both of us have had a food addiction since we met. I think we do. Yes, we both enable each other. It's hard because you're... Thank you. You spend a lot of time alone because no one wants to be around you. But my sister Robin and my sister Dodo live here in town. We talk on the phone mostly. They just don't like seeing me in bed, so they don't come over. Taters are pretty good. Broke my heart. Lisa did when she got bedridden. She asks us to come over sometimes and see her. I'll come see Lisa as much as we should do. It hurts. I don't like seeing her like that. I just hope that she can get out of bed soon and be able to get up again. Yeah, I feel like I'm just not worth their time. And that's terrible, but it's the truth. My biggest fear is dying. I want to change my lifestyle to get out of bed and do things. And it's never too late to keep trying. And if I don't try, then where am I going to get? You want me to put that up? Can I just mention that Randy isn't even good, he's not even in good health himself, neither. Okay, he's not even in good health himself, neither, okay, and he has to do all these things. Randy, you're a waste, man, you need to get the hell out of there, man. Go live your life and be with someone who's going to look after you as well as you, as much as you look after them, simple as that. Um, as in, uh, 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 Randy's trying to put himself in, in, in early, early retirement, he's trying to put himself in an early nurse's home. Nah, um, I'm calling it. You say what? Watch. I listen. I'm just, I'm just calling it. This. Oh, I, I don't know. Some of you may think I'm being over dramatic right now. I'm being too. Did nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah. nah, nah. <laughs> oh, it scares me. All I'm gonna do is keep gaining more weight, and I'm not gonna be here. But between me and God, I know I can change this. I just have to do it. I don't have a choice. Oh, I want to really. I must be pretty bad if people don't want to come visit me. I mean, it's nobody's fault on my own. I put all this weight up and I wanted this bed. Thank you. You know, I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be free. And that's all I want. I 
That's what he wants to eat. So when's your doctor now, appointment? I guess today, before. Um, nervous? Yeah, I'm nervous. You know, this man's gonna put down his foot. I hope he get down to Houston. I wanna make an appointment with the doctor now and talk to him face to face. I hope he gets surgery one day. I wanna know what I can and cannot eat. Hopefully he'll send me a list. And how much weight he's gonna make me lose, because you know what he always do. Yeah. Probably gonna have me lose what? I'm very nervous. My doctor now has a point. I'm nervous because I don't know what he's gonna tell me. I think he's gonna tell me to lose a lot of weight. Heck, if I lose 100 pounds, I might be able to get up. You probably get up now. We just got strengthen your legs. I'm afraid to put weight on that ankle. Yeah, no. So I just sense that doctor's like a bust that bone through. Please hope she can get out of bed and scare the grandkids. This is my last chance, though, because if I don't do this, I'm going to die. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, 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 Dr. Now isn't letting her speak once, okay? And then he finally lets her speak. <laughs> She's like, yeah, we both cook together. And he's, he's like, but how's that possible if you don't leave the bed? Oh yeah, no, I've got an electric screen or whatever she said on the, on, on the side of the bed. I was just thinking to myself, I thought I saw it earlier on, but I'm just imagining myself I'm Dr. Now right now. If I was Dr. Now right now, in my mind, I'd be thinking, no wonder why you're over 600 pounds, because you literally have a stove next to you to cook your own shit if he ain't there. So when he's not there, you, you're still going to be able to cook your own stuff. Like, that's bad. That is bad. Like, yo, nah, man. I know what some people are thinking right now. They're thinking, bro, why are you being so mean for? It's not funny. You shouldn't be laughing, okay? She's not in a good position in her life. Listen, y'all. Process this. Process everything that she has said so far. She says, she has said that she knows that she's killing herself. She knows that she's going to die. Then she said that she doesn't want to die. Then she says that she needs to do better, okay? She has said things on the both sides of the end of the scale, okay? You know what I mean? It's both for and against. That's because she's intelligent like that. She ain't stupid. So she's trying to say things so people don't say it to her instead or saying things that we think so therefore there's less judgment. She knows what she's saying. She's very smart. I give her that, but she ain't smart as me. So the fact is though, if I had to say all these things, but then she's like, yeah, but I got a stove right next to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I can cook my own shit too. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter whether, wherever I got, it doesn't matter whether I have an enabler or not, I can still enable myself regardless because I got everything that I need right here next to me in my bed. <laughs> I can't get up to go places, but I can roll over to pick up my stove, put it on the bed, and, or put it wherever she needs to put it. You know what I mean? Roll over and get the food and cook it and everything. <laughs> <laughs> This woman, this, this is what I'm trying to say to you, though, guys. I have to laugh this off because if I don't, you know, I'm, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna talk, and then I'll talk with a lot of aggression. Then I'll get angry. Then I'll get infuriated, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> but listen, I'm just saying. Doctor, I was chilling, talking to. Her. He's not letting her speak, and then and then he, he he says that she's gonna enable her, and then she goes, "We cook together," and then he's like, "How? You told me you don't leave the bed." 
No, I've got. <laughs> All right, let me stop. Let me stop. I'm doing too much. I'm doing too much. I'm sorry, man, but that's just the dumbest. What the? F what the? F <laughs> nah. <sighs> and she's got grandkids. I didn't even process that she had grandkids prior to this. The fact that she's got a kid and grandkids and she doesn't see any of them. I like. I love the way she twisted it. Though. I love the way she twisted it. She was like, she was like, she was, no one ever comes to see me because nobody loves me. It's interesting how she thinks no one comes to see her but no one loves her. If her kids and her grandkids aren't coming to see her, it's because of something that she has done. That she's not going to be, that she's not going to hold herself accountable for. Because she's a manipulator. She probably pushed away her kids and the grandkids. Well, the kids probably don't want, her kids probably don't want her grandkids. Her kids probably don't want her grandkids seeing her. For whatever reason. There's a lot of darkness behind this woman's story. I can tell you that for sure, for sure, man. Jesus Christ. But she's doing nothing. Nothing. She's one of those people, 100%. She's, 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 just, she's hoping that she'll get a surgery for the, sake of, for the sake of getting a surgery. But she'll reverse it even if she got one. I don't think she'll get one. If she does, I'd be very, very surprised. But anyway, I'm, in, I'm intrigued to find out what instructions Dr. Knight gives her in terms of how she's going to lose um, a couple of pounds. But let's see. Then put the scale on the side and cook. That sounds dangerous. Randy, take care of you full time. Yeah. Okay, so what are you willing to do to save your life? I'm going to follow whatever you tell me to do, and he's going to make sure of it. I hope so, because your health will start to deteriorate rapidly if things happen to you. Can you lower the camera so we can see you late? Have some better idea what's going on? Oh, can you hold it down there? Mm. I'm going to see part of you late, but not in the entire part. I got lymphedema bad, too. I see that. And what did this uh, tubing go into the oxygen? Oh, no, that's a pier wick, so when I pee, it goes in this tube. So I don't get wet. What do you do when you have your bad movement? Um, Randy, how, we turn over and use like a bedpan. I see. So you have a whole system for you to keep you in bed all day. What was the last time you were able to sit up and walk and get out of bed? I haven't been able to walk like I said about three years, three, four years. So have you been in bed for three, four years? And what do you have done in the past three, four years to get your stamina up to get out of the bed? I don't really do anything except leg exercises. I do them every day. So what is the plan for you to get out of the bed? Well, I'm hoping to lose some weight and get some physical therapy so I can get out of bed. How do you think that's going to happen? I'm going to have to stay on a strict diet and stop. Oh, yes. What do you have done to change that? Yeah, I guess I haven't been trying hard enough. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Do you not know what the problem is? Well, yeah, I know what the problem is. I guess I just haven't done anything about it. So what do you think the problem is? I eat too much. So how long do you know that you're eating too much? Oh, for a long time. So what is new today after 51 years? I don't want to die. I want to change my life and get out of this bed. You say that, but doing that hasn't been important enough for you to start losing weight before this point. So you live in uh, Nebraska? Yes, sir. Well, we don't have any sort of transportation to take you to Houston from there. If you want to come here, the goal for you will be to drive down. But then anybody of your size, bedridden, and uh, without medical supervision or medical passport, is going to be very risky to come down to Houston soon. Before you do that, you need to get out of that bed. It's the priority before you do anything. And you can do that by losing weight and exercising. Okay. Okay. So we're going to email you some information. I'm going to send you some diet instruction that I want you to read. Okay. And, and follow that in daily basis. The diet is going to limit you to 1,200 calories a day. We focus on protein and almost no carbs. What do you think? Do you work is going to be enabling you or are you going to stick with your healthy eating habit? What do you think? Stick with the healthy eating because I have to do. He said he's going to stick with it. Uh, they said I want you to stick with the diet and change your eating habit quickly when you are 637 pounds. If you stick with the 1,200 calorie diet, you can easily be able to lose 40 to 50 pounds. So in two months, you can easily lose 100 pounds. But I'm only going to ask you to lose 75. And uh, I expect you to lose that much. Okay. And with what I'm going to send you, there is some exercises that I want you to start doing. And that you can do in a bed. Okay. And to free your stamina. And do you have any physical therapy over there to help you? No, I don't have physical therapy. Okay. So I'm going to set that up for you to start PT at home. To work with you to get you up. Can you set up on the side of bed? I can if someone helps me get on the side of bed, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I want you to work with them to set up and to start to stand again. And once you do that, they will help you to start to take some steps. Yeah. Okay. All right, Lisa, if you need anything, you may call, otherwise I'll follow up with you in two months, and I want you to be 75 pounds lighter. I want you up and walking by day. We used the way you get me to calculate your progress. Okay, thank you for your help. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. He's right, I don't want the running. I'm going to run out of time if we don't do something. We're going to do it. I'm so mad at myself. <laughs> Maybe mad at yourself. You did not put that food in my mouth already. How many times I have to tell you that? Nobody did this to me. I gave it to you. So what? You can bring me 10 pieces in here, but unless I choose to eat them, then I shouldn't be eating them. This is nobody's fault but my own. I killed, basically killed myself. No, both of us killed you. No, I did. We're going to get you out of this. <laughs> I have a 
been up uphill battle with Lisa. She's been stuck in the bed for years with no ambition to get up and change her situation. Which means there's a part of her that wants her to be in that bed all day with someone feeding her and taking care of her. Which means she has spent a lot of time justifying living like that to herself. So changing that isn't going to be easy, especially with the neighbor there with her, always ready to feed her. So I'm not sure Lisa means it when she says she's ready to change. My concern is she really means she's ready for someone to come and change her situation. Hopefully I'm wrong about that and she's ready to work to change her life. Because until she gets up and starts working again, we're not going to be able to do much for her. But in her condition, bringing her to Houston could be too taxing on her body. So we need to get her feet down and get her mobile again before we do anything else for her. But that's going to be all up to her. She's going to have to decide what's more important, stay in the bed and eating all day or saving her life. We will give her the instructions and the tools to do what she needs to change. But it is all up to her to make it happen. Alright, I love you. This is the kind of changes I have to make. The diet is confusing. He wants me to eat a lot of protein, no carbs. But you don't want me to eat like fat stuff, you know, a lot of hamburger. My sister Robin cleaned my house out for me. Got rid of all the junk food. I filled my kitchen with all these stuff. Whatever. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pray to God and hope that Randy will help me figure out what to eat, what not to eat, and the surgeons, and we can make this work together. I don't know. Go get some cookies. How many do you want? You like six or seven cookies. Get some peanut butter cookies. A six pack of them if they got them. So you want bacon cheddar? You want jalapeno cheddar? Just grab one of each one. Go get some cereal too, babe. We need about seven boxes of cereal, so keep track of what you throw in there. Get some, something with sugar on it. So just stand right there. Get some of that peanut butter right up there. Okay, now go to the candy aisle. Never gonna go to the chip aisle. I'm at the chip aisle right now. Oh, well, get chips while you're standing there. Um, I don't know. Get five bags. You might just get a couple jars of that dip too. Alright, what else you need? Go to the soda aisle. Get like eight cases of pop. Just grab any of it. Get drinking. Okay, and then go over and get like six frozen pizzas. And get a pack of corn dogs too. Let's see corn dogs. Alright, just grab four bags of pizza roll and get out of there. Alright, right, babe, that's all we need, so I'm gonna see you when you get here. Alright. Okay, love you, bye. Well, I could do Oh god, this one makes me so mad. She makes me so mad. You know, I'm not the only person that just saw that order and heard that order. And boyfriend over there didn't do nothing to object. Jesus Christ. Okay, cool, whatever. Let's <laughs> the exercise and diet, Dr. Now wants me to do. Alright, babe, that's all we need. Weights, whatever they call it over there. Uh, uh, it's just the paper he's in. Yes, I understand everything they want me to do. I like to get my exercising back up to twice a day. I mean, I really do have to exercise my legs because I get a blood clot of my own. My arms gonna hurt as well. I'm stuck in bed all the time. I haven't walked in four years. I can't even stand up four feet, they hurt so bad. But I feel like if I can lose enough weight, at least trying to get on my feet, I can do it. You want one to work with me? If I would get out of bed right now, my legs and knees wouldn't hold my weight and I would just fall on the floor. I was in a nursing home for about three months and we tried that and that's just exactly what happened. And I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm gonna tell you, I ain't, I'm scared to put my feet on the floor and try again, but I know I got to. And with the grace of God, it's gonna work out okay. That's one reason why I wanna go see Dr. Now so bad, because not only will it help me lose weight, but I know he'll give me physical therapy and stuff to get me back on my feet, which I got to do that. Raining my arms hurt. Oh, I know your chest hurts. I'm telling you, go to the doctor if it's go. I love Randy because we've been together forever and he's really good to me. He does a lot of stuff that a lot of men wouldn't do. And I appreciate him for it. You wanna go to the hospital, babe? I think I have to. Mm. Lay down for a little bit and see if that'll help out. The pain in my left leg. I don't think Randy's jealous. He's afraid if I lose weight that I'll leave him. Because then I won't, I won't need him, you know? Right now he does basically everything for me. If I can start doing it by myself, then I think he's gonna feel like I'm not gonna need him anymore. But I mean, that's not the case because when we first met, I did everything for myself. We got different personalities, though. He's really quiet. He doesn't talk to people. He's not around people. And I'm the opposite. I like to be around people and I like to go out and do things. He's not like that. And you know damn well, I lose some weight, my butt's going out. <laughs> See ya! <laughs> I tell him every day my expectations for myself in one year is to lose enough weight to get out of this bed because I got a date with my granddaughter, take her to the fair. And I do not plan on missing that date. So that's, that's my plans. I'm doing this for Dr. Now, but make me for me. My arms are killing me.
Oh, Lisa has turned away physical therapy every time they've come to see her. After a month, Dr. Now decided to call her early to find out what's going on. Ooh-wee. Let's get it. Hello, Dr. Now. How are you? Good, sir. What are you doing in bed? Sitting here doing nothing. That's a problem I'm calling about. You keep refusing PPE and you're not working with them to get up. So, Dr. Now, you said you could sit and get to the side of bed if you have help. And with same PPE, to help you as doctor to do that, to build up your stamina. But you refuse to bother with them. So, what's going on? I never said I'd sit on the side of the bed. You must got me confused with someone else. Really? Yeah. So if you can't get up a month, how do you expect to come to Houston? I'm supposed to be coming tomorrow. I uh, heard what you're in the bed. You're going to come to the bed and move to that bed from uh, where you are to the Houston? No, the ambulance people are going to help me get in the van, and then I'm going to come down there and see you. That's medical transport, and I told you that's too risky. But that's okay. I don't think you're really planning on doing that. So what do you have done to change your eating habits and lose some weight? I send in my book and all the instructions you need. I don't quite understand your book and what kind of diet you want me to be on. Then you haven't read it because there is only one diet in there. You read the stuff where you understand that you eat only three times a day, only about 400 calories and protein, and you avoid the, all the high calorie food list that we send you, which part of that is hard to understand. I'm, I'm confused all the way around, I guess. You're, you're confused. Okay. I think the reality is you're playing games and pretending to be confused because you still want to eat whatever you want, whenever you want. So we need to cut the food off at the source. Where is your neighbor boyfriend? So I can talk to him to you, right? He's over repeat Just a minute, I'll hand him the computer. Come. Hear me. just said oh my days the way she just went over randy like that listen the fact is this here randy is in this position because he's, he's an idiot randy needs to get him some you know randy <sighs> the fact is i have no sympathy for randy because he chooses to be in this life okay and she says that he's more than happy to keep her being overweight because therefore you know he's afraid that if she leaves if she loses weight then she may leave him i don't know so maybe he's enabling her to just the way dr now oh, oh no he is enabling her but maybe he's actually doing it intentionally if that makes any sense but the matter of fact is though you know what how, how do you how do you make sense out of this nonsense man the fact is this okay randy stop being a little baby you know what i'm saying man up man up and leave this woman that, that's that's my solution for him you know what I mean? I wouldn't say, I, I'm not going to say man up and, you know, and stand your ground against her because she doesn't love him. I don't think that she loves him at all. He needs to get up and go. That's it. Find value elsewhere. Okay? Come on, Randy. Do better of yourself. But her, on the other hand, ah, you know what? I'm not even going to say anything anymore about this woman because, I, I mean, obviously, I will be supposed to go another hour left of this bloody episode. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not saying anything right now. Okay? <laughs> We're both doing wrong, so I mean, he's only trying to help us. Yeah, we do have to help. I'll be trying to get the food down to you now. But after now, he don't want to talk to you no more. Well, that may be all the problem. That's something he brought to bring us out of roots. He doesn't want to stop doing that because he likes to overfeed you for whatever reason. And as long as he brings it to you, maybe I'll be the best. And if you both aren't willing to stop this unhealthy behavior, nothing is going to change. And if that's the case, what is the point of the difference? What do you think we're going to do magically to make him lose weight? Well, no, I know you're not going to magically lose weight, but i got to do it myself, and he's going to have to help me do it. And you don't have a lot of time to race. And you're going to run out of time soon. I know. Well, if you know, then you're going to have to do your part to make the changes. Okay. You say that, but I don't think you need it or that you really want help. So what are you trying to say, Lisa? I was trying to tell you I need help, but I want it. Well, the help that you want, we're giving you the help you're not taking it. The help you want is to stop eating and stop overeating and getting yourself in the food. And we give you the opportunity to do that. And you're not doing that, and you want us to help you. I'm doing the best I can. <sighs> Listen. Yeah. Okay. Trying to throw no tantrum, Dr. Now. But you are. You know, we gave you all you need just to make progress in that one. So why you haven't done that? I don't know. Well, what is the point of calling us and you're not doing anything you're supposed to do? I do want the help. So what kind of help do you need? I don't know, Dr. Now. I just know I need help losing weight getting on this bed. You send it to diet. You need to do it and work with PT if you want any more help. You think you can do that? Yeah, I can do that. Well, let me talk to him again. Here, Randy. 
Yeah. <laughs> Can we get an agreement that there'll be no standing between the mill? Yes. Okay. And the mill need to be me when I pour the carry. Okay. Lisa, do you think you can do that chapter in the book? Chapter yes. Plan? Yeah, I can. Okay, you need to put that chapter plan and start doing that exercise, okay? Okay. And then PT comes, you work with them. Okay. Okay, I'll follow up in two months. And if you do it, wait and get out of the bed. And if you get to that point, maybe then we should consider for you to travel to Christian. All right. Otherwise, I don't see any point coming down here. Okay. Right, bye, Lisa. Bye-bye. Let me say bye to Randy. Okay. Okay, Randy. Okay. If you need anything, you may call. Okay. Let's take my program and then I'll put you some way to pay. Okay. If you need anything, you may call. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. If Lisa doesn't wake up and stop playing games, then the outcome isn't going to be good for her. She spent a lot of time learning to manipulate those around her to get what she wants, and she seems to think she can keep doing that in this situation. She wants to pretend she doesn't know what to do, and convince me that she's trying, in the hope that I will eventually give her weight loss surgery, and all the work will be done for her. But that's not going to happen, because unless she does the work, nothing anyone does will help her in the long run. So she's not going to manipulate her way into losing the weight and walking again. Either she does what she has to do and work at it, or her situation is only that she doesn't make it. The choice is up to her. I told you, even Dr. Now knows it. She's a manipulator. Randy, on the other hand, is, do you know what? She's a manipulator. That's why probably no one wants to see her. But Randy, on the other hand, it's not even a case of manipulation, in my opinion. I just think he's an enabler. That's it, flat, flat out. Simple as that. But hey, let's get into it. Ooh, Lisa has canceled her appointment with the dietitian on multiple occasions, but Dr. Now has insisted today. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Oh, man, and the plot fucking thickens. But okay, cool. Let's, 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 let's get into it. I don't want to go over anything, brother. I think it's a waste of time. Come in. Hi, hello. How are you, Lisa? I'm all right. I'm Emily. I'm a dietitian from Lincoln. How's your day going so far? Fine. Well, I probably won't even answer your questions, to be honest with you. I just want to get to know you a little bit, okay? Can you tell me about yourself? I don't know. I really nothing to tell. Well, we didn't just end up here today, right? No. What's some of your story? I don't, I don't know. Can you tell me about just growing up and what food was like for you? I don't know. We ate regular meals. Yeah? Did you get the diet that Dr. Nell had nope. provided? Uh, you no, get no information diet. from him? No diet, no nothing. Okay. You want to talk to him at all? Yeah, I've talked to him. Okay. What has he provided for you when you have met with him? Nothing but rudeness. <laughs> Okay. I refuse to talk to that man again, too. I don't need to be made like I'm a piece of from someone who's supposed to be helping me. You're not a piece of <laughs> Well, that's not how they make you feel. Um, what's the ultimate goal for you? I just want to get out of this bed. Okay. So, to get out of bed, what would that entail? I want to figure out how to get up and walk again. Okay. So, what would need to happen in your life to be able to get up and walk again? I don't know. What types of things do you like to snack on? <laughs> just hands on whatever's around. I don't have a choice. Okay. So, what kind of foods get brought into the house? I, I don't know. What do you eat on a day-to-day -day basis? I don't know. I had oatmeal toast for breakfast. You like to eat snack food. So what type of snack food? I don't, I don't eat chips. I used to never. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the fact is, though, yeah, this woman needs some deep therapy. But at the same time, though, not to contradict myself, it doesn't really matter how deep the therapy that she needs. She needs to want it to actually want it this is why this one is so challenging to watch because she's expecting to be given everything she's expecting to be given a surgery without making a single effort she she, she wants to manipulate her way a whole not a whole life but the majority of her life she's manipulated to teach her everything her narrative is all about manipulation because she can't manipulate dr now into giving her a freaking surgery she's behaving like a spoiled child that's what it is so the fact is, even if she got deep therapy, it probably wouldn't make a difference because she needs to want it. I mean, she's gonna have to go to she's gonna have to go to like rehab, legit go to rehab where she has no choice. She needs to put in that position where she has no choice at all. That she has to apply with what people are saying, and she has to forget about who the hell she thinks she is, and that's one manipulative human being. She needs to stop that. That is it. Simple as that. She ain't losing no weight while she's still at home in that freaking bed. No matter who comes and visit her, no matter who gives her a phone call and flipping FaceTime and whatnot, she ain't changing anything. Put her in Rio, put her in a location where she hasn't got a choice. Simple as that. And if she still can't do what's needed to be done, just like Life by Jen, well then send her back home and let her be on her way. Because at the end of the day, her life choices are her life choices. Because we've seen it with Life by Jen, right? She's been in what, in, 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 in rehab now or whatever she's been in for like, was it five months? She's lost barely any weight. 
Tammy, you know what? She makes Tammy Slayton look good. Because I mean, when Tammy was in rehab the first time, she lost weight. You just when she came back out, it went, it went, it went backwards again. You see what I'm saying? I don't know about Tammy's current situation, to be honest with you, you know, you know what I'm saying? But the fact is this, you, you need to want it yourself. She doesn't want it. She, she, she's saying it for the sake of saying it, not because she means it. You know, just eat whatever people give me. Lisa, do you mind? Randy, are you familiar with the recommendations that Dr. Nell has made? No? Okay. He hasn't made none. He just said, do okay. me fill up a place and I tell you about those recommendations? No. So, I think the overall goal is that we're promoting some weight loss to be able to help get you to Houston to get help. Is that correct? I'm not going to Houston. Okay. So, overall, though, you have the goal of you're wanting to lose weight so that you can get out of bed, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what do you think is contributing to continuing to gain weight? Or oh, I don't know. He said, if you want to make change, I need you to engage with me. But I don't know. So you've not struggled with- What is this going to do me any good with you just coming here and talk? This is not even what a nutritionist has done. I've seen nutritionists before. This is Lisa, this is my specialty of working with people who struggle in their relationship with food. This is what I do every day. You're wasting my time. What would you rather be doing? I don't know. Leave me alone, lady. Sometimes when we get angry and frustrated, we want to blame other people and have them take- Okay, this is over with. Get out. I'm done. I'm done talking to you. Give me my book. I don't blame nobody for anything that's happened to me. Lisa, is part of you afraid of getting help? Just get away from me. Okay. Responses, she definitely demonstrated. I told you all the beginning. I told you. I told you guys. I knew it. She gave me the vibe. She gave me this. She what I'm saying. This is supposed to be so mad, man. I told you guys. So if anybody was, and I know some people like to comment as, the, as they're watching the video, which I love. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. But if you assumed early that I was wrong, and when you're here now at this point, you can now comment and say, you know what, I apologize for my first comment, okay? I understand why you was the way you was. You know what I'm saying? It's okay, man. I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you. <sighs> Guys, come on. Created a lot of resistance. And she's obviously angry, but the big part of her journey is going to be being able to be honest and vulnerable. And so Lisa's unwillingness and hesitancy to engage definitely raises a lot of questions for me about whether or not she's really committed to the journey of healing. I also told them I cannot do physical therapy after 3.30. So how, I mean, what are we going to do about that? He set that up at 6.30 at night. Dr. Now he knew good well I could not do anything about that, so that's disrespect on his part. And I'm supposed to respect this man? No. It's all disrespect towards me, but it's okay to respect me because I'm a fat bitch. Where's my respect? Bring your ass in. Hi there, Lisa. Yeah. Hi, Lisa. My name is Stacy, and I am a physical therapist. But we can we do a little chatting first just to you got five minutes okay so how about this what goals you got five minutes do you have as far as physically with physical therapy what can physical therapy help you there's nothing you can do for me have you had physical therapy in the past are you interested in any type of exercises that you no. can do in bed no no i'd like to help you Whatever. you are not supposed to be here this late. how is that fair you are not supposed to come this late i really don't have anything to say to you or anything i want to do you wasted your time Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. I have some resistance bands out in my vehicle. If it's something that you'd like to, I can bring in here and show you a couple things that you can do. I'm not sure. I'm not having you show me anything. If you got some papers, I'll take them and I'll figure it out later on. I don't have any papers with me, but my plan was just to see what we can do today, and then I can get you papers. Nothing that I can do here with you no. for you. Okay. You wouldn't consider anything. Absolutely not. Well, I would love to help you in whatever way I could. Okay. Yeah. I really truly would. So you would like me just to. Go out. Is that? Yeah, there's really nothing we can do. Okay. Is there any type of activity that you are able to do with the bed? Moving your legs, moving your arms, rolling side to side. Are there things like that that you do just for activity, for movement? Okay. How about sitting edge of bed? Are you able to do that? No. Okay. Um, or even just raising your arms up overhead and coming back down. Oh my God, never mind. Thank you for coming. That's the end of it. Bye bye. Thank you. And this is why my family don't white people no more. Uh, 
I don't think okay, I, I think that that part is definitely incorrect, but I'm pretty sure this is this is why my family don't with people anymore. Yeah, I don't think it meant white people. <laughs> if that would make sense. But yeah, I think yeah, okay, but okay, okay, okay. Just had to double check what I said, okay, come on. Sick and um, they actually had to come and take him out because he was unconscious. So, um, after that, they're like, you know, they think he has COVID, you really gotta go get tested. So, I called an ambulance and they came and got me in, took me to the hospital. And I said, Yeah, you got COVID, and this is where I winded up at. He fell off the bed, actually, he rolled off the bed. So, I said, That's it, Randy. I said, I'm calling an ambulance, and I called one, and they took him away, and I, I never got to see him again. He texted me once. And this is the last time I heard from him. He says, I love you and you fight so you can come back home and be with us. I just miss his hugs and his kisses and everything, watching him cook. And he'd be here right now sitting in that chair over there, you know. I just miss, miss everything about him. He was a good man. I think it's going to be very hard to go home because Randy's not there. I'm going to go home to that empty house where I'm used to him being there and all this stuff there. And he's just not going to be there. where it's at 
So I was wondering if you could send it all to me again. And they said that they'll help me. Because, you know, they're the ones going to be preparing my meals and cooking for me. And they said they'll help me to stay on this diet. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll send it back to you, but you have to actually follow it this time. You know, yeah. Kind of you. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I can do it. I, I got to the point where the hospital, where I just eat on pool. Well, you started with 537 from the weight that you originally gave me. Now you're at 554, you know. That is an 83 pound weight loss. And that's a great improvement to what we got right now. You don't want to go home and gain all that weight back. No, I don't. I really don't. Then hopefully you soon. You can stand up and uh, be uh, able to take some steps on your own. Yeah, I would love to, love to do that. Right. I'll send you everything again and get PT set up and get you back on the program. And since you recently had a big loss, I'm also going to set up some psychotherapy for you to talk to them and see if they can help you. Okay. But after this, we need to get you in better shape and get you ready for a uh, more activity and get the point that you're going to be able to live on your own. Oh, yeah, that'd be so nice. Up. Okay. Please, okay. please don't forget to send me that book and stuff, though. We won't. You know, everything in here is going to be up to you uh, to make better progress for yourself, okay? Okay. I'll do the best I can. Well, uh, you have no choice at this point. No, I really don't. Don't go home and turn your new roommate into a neighbor. No, they're going to uh, cook and stuff for me, and they're going to help me learn how to prepare meals like you wanted to and stuff like that. All right, uh, have you worked with them before? Um, They're just real good friends of mine. Okay, I'm going to have to see how that will work out. And once you do that, we can work on you coming out to use that. Okay. So these are all the goals that you got, and then you have to work on them and get them all done. Okay, I'll, I'll do my best. But and don't depend on other people to give you the right stuff, to do everything for you. Okay. You have to make those right choices yourself. Okay, I can do that. And then, you know, and, and try to eat the smallest amount that you can, and don't worry, okay? Okay. And that would be one of the most important things that you need. Okay. All right, I'm back in some weight. Yeah, you got two. Oh, wait. I'm sorry about your boyfriend. Well, thank you. Uh, but I think at this point, getting something has to be your highest priority. But whether or not, that's going to be All right, well, I appreciate it. All right, well, nice to see you again. Let's take care. You too, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah, uh, I mean, listen, we can only wish and pray that this is the turning point. We can only wish and pray, but um, first and foremost, sorry to hear about, about, about Randy, though, you know what I'm saying, okay? Uh, Kobe took him. Ah, <sighs> COVID, man. But yeah, uh, but yeah, let's let's hope that maybe this is a turning to this is the uh, thing. But to be fair, I mean, I'm very surprised that Dr. Nav still stayed. I thought he was just gonna tell her just to F off, to be honest with you, because of the way she conducted herself. But uh, let's let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I'm not. I can tell you this now. I'm not optimistic right now. I don't have high hopes that she's gonna turn things around personally because they hardly ever do in this bloody show. So yeah. And out, out of everyone so far that, that I've covered, she's the worst. Yes. But yeah, let's get it. It seemed like Lisa had a bit of wake-up call with her recent illness, and now she wants to do the program again. It's sad that it had to come to that for her to start to see the reality of her situation. But thankfully for her sake, she seems to have gotten good care in a local hospital that not only helped her to pull through everything, but they have also managed to get her weight down just over 80 pounds, which is a very good start for her. But we are still going to be limited in what we can do for her until she does what she needs to get out of the bed. Since she recently had a significant loss, I want psychotherapy to talk with her, make sure she has an outlet now for how she's feeling. So she doesn't use that as an excuse to start eating whatever she wants again. Because Lisa can't afford to miss this chance up. She's very lucky to make it this far in her condition. And if she goes home and goes back to old habits and doesn't do what she needs to change, then things are not going to end well for her. So this is her last chance. She either does what she needs this time, or we don't play games with her. <laughs> why is it why is it like in all of these stories whenever they have their friends come over or even their partners for the on that hand as well why is it their friends and partners are, are also overweight too i mean it's, it's 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 quite unsettling for me personally to to to, to see this because you got a friend coming in 
saying to her, so this exercise you've got to do, I'll do it with you. You've got, the, the, this, is the, this, is, this is obviously your, your diet now. This is how many calories you be having, okay? But in that moment in time, shouldn't that person be like, you know what? I think I'm going to do this with you, to be fair. Because if I do it with you, then that means I'm going to get myself to a better weight, to a better health, um, health, health, health situation. And therefore, I'm also preventing myself from potentially ever catching up to where you are now. I know that's something that they're never really going to target per se on the show because the show is always about that individual person. But the fact is, though, there's there's always there's always there's, there's always similarities in each episode, right? And the similarities is that they always have partners, you know what I mean? Or they had partners. They always had kids that they don't see anymore, more or less, depending on the on the person. Okay, um, and then they always have um um, um uh, partners or friends that are overweight that do enable them. Do you know what I mean? Or, uh, but. But because they're bigger than those, than, 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 than the friends or partners, for some bizarre reason, it means that they don't need to be on the same diet. They don't need to lose weight. They don't need, they don't need to improve their health. You see what I'm saying? But this is the problem though, you know, like you could be someone right now that you consider yourself fat right now, okay? And then you could have someone, a friend, but then, but then you can have a friend that's obese. The person that's fat isn't isn't really gonna think. Oh, I need to lose weight because I've got someone who's bigger than me. It's the, it's that stereotype, isn't it? Where like you, you can get a group a group of girls. There's always gonna be the one fat one, and that's the one that everybody always wants to go do things with because that's the one that makes them feel better. Hey, you wanna go out for eat? Yeah, let me call the fat one. You know what I mean? But it's just interesting how in those situations, when it's all skinny girls and a fat girl, the fat one goes to. But then when it's a fat girl and an obese girl. The roles are reversed. The fat girl is now the skinny girl. And then the obese girl is now the fat girl. But in reality, they both are both. I hope I'm making sense, but I'm just saying it's just quite fascinating to me how seeing someone else in the position there is doesn't motivate them to also want to start to pick themselves up immediately to do better for themselves as well. But whatever. It talks about how much proteins and everything, too. Okay. These are some pretty big chicken breasts. Yeah, that's what I said. That's why I said I don't think we'll need them all. No. Maybe I'm only supposed to eat three ounces, so probably not even a half of one is only three ounces. It takes six to eight hours to digest food completely. Chicken's in. So I'll be a little bit. Oh, well, I didn't know our intestines were 20 to 30 feet long. I didn't know that either. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm blurring some things from it. Laura. I'm tired today. I <laughs> do. I didn't go to bed until like 4.30. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Do you want me to get you set up for this? I appreciate it. <laughs> Can you see from here? Yeah, I'm just worried about not being able to hear I'll turn it up for you. Okay. We'll go ahead and step out and give you some privacy. Hi there. Hello. I'm Dr. Paradise. I'm Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Good, good to see you. Um, how are you doing? I'm okay. Okay, I, I see you're laying back in bed there. Uh, when's the last time you got out of that bed? About four years ago. Holy cow. Um, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. When, when did you first get sick? I really don't know. I never paid attention okay. to my weight or anything like that. I never bought Nobody gets to be 600 pounds um, by accident. You know, yeah. there's usually somebody feeding them or, or some emotional eating going on. How, how did you get to be 600 pounds? Well, I don't know. My boyfriend used to bring me fit food, so I don't know. Okay. Which which boyfriend was this? Randy. When was Randy around? Last 10 years. Is he still around? No, he's died. Oh, wow. Tell me about that. Just something to say. He just died. Uh, what did he die from? COVID. Oh, no. He got I'm sick. So, I'm so sorry that you had that loss. Um, how long ago was that? It'll be two months on the 18th. Okay. Uh, Ricky was fine with you being in the bed? No, he didn't like it, but we didn't know what to do. What do you uh, uh, remember about him? Randy was one of those people who would do anything and everything for you. He was pretty committed to, to seeing you get out of that bed, I bet. Yeah. I, I, want, you, I want you to hang on to that, because I think that, that um, probably the best way you can remember Randy is by losing weight. What are the tears about? I just want to get out of this bed. I want my wife back. I want to be able to go do things with my grandchildren and, you know. Lisa, it's, it's meaningful that you're getting emotional about this because it, it means you really care. And I, I want to see the behavior that matches that care. I need to figure out a way to feel like I'm really worth it, though, because I don't feel like I'm worth much of anything. Well, laying in a bed will do that to you, right? Yeah. Yeah, one of the best ways to build yourself worth is to do stuff that makes you feel worthy. Okay. Lisa, it sounds like you've got it right in your head. You've got, you've got the internal motivation. You really want to do this, and we just have to sort of connect the dots for you. Yeah. Do, do you see any, any roadblocks for you, things that are keeping you in the bed? Just myself. Part of the, the, the challenge for you getting out of that bed is, is in your head. I understand there's real physical limitations, but I, I wonder if you're also a little afraid of getting out of bed. Oh, I'm terrified of that. I'm lie. Yeah. And, and the way 
way we usually work on fear is we, we break it into little parts. Okay. Like, what about hanging your... How do you do that? And I know it's going to be hard, but um, hard things are, are, are usually in front of good things that we want. Yeah. Okay. So I, maybe sort of incrementally working up to sitting up, hanging your legs over the side of the bed, just getting used to the feel of, of not laying down. Okay. And then eventually maybe resting your feet on the floor so that you don't feel the fear isn't what's keeping you from doing it. No, I, I got a question for you, though. Is there something sure. to do that'll help me with getting over Randy? Well, you know, grief is hard. Yeah. And um, I, I sometimes say if they could put time in a pill, they, they'd sell out of it. So so time is going to be helpful to you for the grief. And, and Lisa, the, the, you're, you have kind of a choice what to do with that grief. You can either let it keep you stuck in bed or it can be your motivation to get out. Okay. Because Randy sounds like he was a really good guy. He was. And, and Randy wouldn't have wanted you to just lay in that bed and feel bad. No. So one of the best ways to get over the grief of Randy would be to live a full life and, and make him proud of you. Okay. Uh, do you think he's watching you now? Oh, I know he is. So impress him. Okay. I'm, I'm optimistic for you. You can do more than you think you can. I, I think you're going to impress yourself with okay. your ability to, to get up and do stuff. It, it was great to talk to you. Take care and, and we'll keep in touch, okay? All right, thank you. Bye, Lisa. Bye-bye. Thank you. How'd it go? It was fine. How do you feel? How do you feel? I feel okay. He told me to start doing more things for myself and trying to get up out of this, you know, my feet on the floor, sitting up. I don't, I don't know about sitting up. We can help you. Which is a hard thing for me, but I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> I had such a great life, and I don't know why I destroyed it. You still have it. We just got to get you up and moving, okay? Yeah. All right. And I'm your next step of the way. Yeah. We'll do this together. I tell you what's quite interesting is that she references to her grandchildren a lot but never to her actual children something massive definitely happened between her and her children you know what i mean or, or her and her child so let's, so let's say whatever you know so whatever that is that also obviously something that's a problem and that's something else that needs to be amended as well so i really hope that whatever issues that she has going on with her grand no with her own children is just something that can be fixed you know what I mean? And, uh, but I guess we won't know into, well, I guess we never will know, but I feel like that's also a, a place in her life where things are obviously not good. You know what I mean? That are also affecting her too, but hey, let's see what happens. Hi there, Lisa. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm okay. Good, I'm Stacy. it's all right? Yep, okay. I've been stressed out over physical therapy. I don't think I have to do this, but it's time for me to take care of me. It might be a little late, but we're trying. How about this? We're going to start with some arm exercises, okay? okay? To start with, I'm just going to have you raise your arms up overhead and back down. And you had physical therapy earlier, is that right? We got that? No, okay, okay, good. We're going to do 10 of these. Is that right? I want you to let me know if anything is sore, anything hurts. Okay. Feel like your arms get tired? Okay, right. Okay. Good. You will just have to tell me about legs, though, because I've got some sores on my legs. Okay. I've got some exercises for legs, too, and I brought some gloves so we can check that out. <clears throat> okay. So, I also brought some bands with me. Let's do this. I'm going to have you grab a hold of this band. Okay. You're just in front of me, you're just gonna, yeah, perfect. Does that feel okay? Yeah, okay. Good job. Eight, nine, ten, perfect. Now I'm gonna have you try this. I'm gonna have you hold that band in front of you, and you're gonna try to just raise it up. Okay, let's do ten of those. Three, four. Does that feel okay? Yeah. Eight, good job. Two more. How about this? Let's do a few things with your legs. We'll give your arms a break. Do your arms feel like they're tired at all? No, well, this arm does, but this one's fine. Okay. I'm going to have you just to start with, with your feet. I just want you to pump them up and down. Go ahead. Good. Does that hurt that spot at all? Good. So let's do this. I'm going to have you try to push your knee down into the bed so you're really tightening these muscles up. Let's do 10 of those, okay? Any pain with that? My knees are a little bit. Are they? Okay. Unusual. <laughs> Good job. Last one right here. Perfect. So let's try to go out to the side. Good. From the knees, you're pulling back in. Okay. And then back out. Good. Two. Three. Good job. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try the other side, all right? You're doing a good job. You're doing great, Lisa. Six. Eight. Nine. Ten. Good job, Lisa. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're going to try this. I want you to try to slide. So you're bending that knee up. Good. And then back down. Good. Two. Is that okay? Yeah. Three. Are these guys usually here that they can help you with these yeah. types of exercises? This one always has to be here. Okay, let me know. All right, so how about this? Does that give you a few things to start with? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Stacy, happy to do stuff that I've never done in my life, but I tried. It felt good. Once I get my mindset to something, then I have no doubt that I can do it. My plan is to do my exercises, eat right, get my fat ass out of the bed. Is there anything, any questions you had or anything that you would like to go over or discuss that we haven't talked about? Mm -hmm. I thought Lisa did really well today with her exercises. She got through everything well and had no pain and appears to be very knowledgeable in the exercises and hopefully can continue those on her own. Thank you so much for working with me. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. All right. Be very careful. Oh, thank you. At least it's not snowing. It's true. It's not snowing. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you Goodbye. Thank you.
showing her on her soft equipment. We'll have uh, to know. It's gonna be in about three minutes. Could you um grab me the computer, please? Where's the computer? It's in the kitchen. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Oh, I got There it is. You'll have to clean this stand off first, someone. Huh? You have to clean this stand off too and sit right there. Okay. Right. I got the pen in my hand, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you want me to set this stuff at? Any place for that? By the TV. Ouch. Any place but on the TV? Yes, just okay, in the house right here. There we go. Okay, I'm just open. I'm going to turn it around. Turn it around. I'm open. Okay. He might want to talk to you anyway since you have quickness. Okay, I don't know. Hey, Hello. Hello. Hey, 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 Hello. I'm doing well, thanks. I wanted to check and see how you're doing since you've been at home from hospital over the past month. I seem to be doing okay. I'm glad to hear that. That's more positive than you should answer, so I'm happy to hear that. But, well, how are you doing with the PT? Because they tell me you were cooperating when you got back home. But over the last month, you haven't been doing as much. And you've been telling them you're too tired and you can't do it. So they have to come back later. So what's going on now? Well, I've been trying. All right, are you able to start walking? No, I haven't even got out of bed yet. How about sitting on the edge of the bed? No, we haven't did that neither. Are you working to do that or what? Yeah, I'm going to work, work on it. All right, so being in the bed for that length of time, you develop a fear of walking. And I think that may be a factor here to work through that, okay? Okay. So you can work with the therapist to work with that fear of walking. And that's going to be important because getting up and moving around is going to be a very important step in your recovery. So the first step is to set up in the bed. Yeah. And then move to the edge of the bed and put your feet on the ground. Okay. And once you do that, then develop your confidence that you can get up with the walker and taking steps. Okay. But you need to work with the therapist to overcome the fear of walking, okay? Okay. Did you get my book? I sent you again with the diet. Yeah, I owe you an apology because all that stuff is in there. I just didn't go that far enough. Well, I'm glad that you read far enough this time so you understand the diet. And you got all the stuff to help you what to do? Yeah. Because you lost a lot of weight in the hospital. You want to continue with that. You don't want to gain it back, right? Right. You got all the right information in the book. Follow those and you will lose weight. Okay. How is it help that you get it at home? Oh, they're very nice people. It's good. So the people that are helping you out with everything at home, they are bringing you the food how many times a day? Uh, three. Are you stacking between the meal? Um, not the last couple days, no. But before, yeah. Okay, well, there is no reason for you to snack, okay? Yeah. And you need to cut back on your calorie intake to the point that you're going to be able to lose some weight. Okay. And don't create the dynamic of an issue that you're eating very low calorie food. Okay. Almost about 100 calories two or three times a day. Okay. And if you do that, you will lose weight, okay? So this is what you need to concentrate on. Okay. To continue losing weight and continue getting your strength up and be up walking so you get to the point that you can travel into Houston. Okay. So make sure you work with PT to get up. Don't keep sending him away because you're tired and you don't want to do it. Okay. This is that chance for you to do the program. So do that and stick with that diet and if you have anything you need to make on and then we go from there. I'll make sure I do those. Okay. Your next big goal is to have your feet on the ground. And at the meantime, if you need anything, you make on. Okay. Thank you kindly. All right. You're welcome. I am encouraged that Lisa seemed to have had a better disposition and that at least she started cooperating with BT. But at the same time, she doesn't look to have lost much weight since she has been home from the hospital. It's positive that she has better the diet this time. So that is more than I can say for how much she was going to do in the beginning. But my big concern right now is that she's clearly losing momentum. She finally started working with BT after she came home from the hospital. But after they got past simple exercises, she stopped cooperating with them. Telling them she was too tired when they tried to push her to sit up at all. This past week, she started telling them they have to come back like she was doing in the beginning. So I'm worried she's going back to her old habits. But right now, we will focus on positive we have been seen from her and continue to get PT to push her to get up and see if we can continue to get her weight down more. But just like in the beginning, this is all still up to her and it's going to come down to whether she's going to put in the hard work and stick with doing what she needs or not. I mean, listen, the fact is this. She made the least progress I've ever seen in my whole entire life on anyone on, on, on this TV show. She lost no weight for the whole thing. I thought Dolly was bad, but Dolly lost some weight for each time. I, rem I don't know if you guys remember Lacey. Lacey was bad too. But this woman right here? All I can say is credit to Dr. Now and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the rest of the team, you know, obviously in terms of the, uh, the, the, the PT and, you know, everyone else who came back and, you know, still tried to help her regardless. But she's losing momentum again. It's like we always say when it comes to Tammy Slayton. Some people just don't have a rock bottom or some people's rock bottoms are just lower than our own. I really don't know what this woman's rock bottom is because for the whole episode, she projected about wanting to lose weight so she can go and see her grandchildren. She kept saying it and saying it and saying it, but she never put the proof on, but she never put the, the attitude out there. You know what I mean? And that's something that even Dr. Now touched on, you know, she's very manipulative. She says things, but she doesn't want to put in the work. And that's just the grand scheme of it. Well, at the end of the day, it is what it is but um she needs to do better there's no way there's no other way around it it's as simple as that because she's just pathetic man <laughs> i don't know how else i can say it you know what i mean she's pathetic i have no sympathy for this woman at all 
You know, she even, she lost Randy, the man she was for 10 years, who enabled her. And to be fair, even though she lost him, she still low-key subliminally blamed him for her weight. She was like, when the psychiatrist was asking her, so how did you get to 600 pounds? She was like, I don't know. And she, he was like, it, does, it, it doesn't just happen overnight. And she was like, well, and I think he asked her, was there, was there someone in your life or something like that? And she was like, well, I was with Randy for 10 years and Randy would feed me. That was her subliminally throwing Randy under the bus. Even though he's not here anymore, she threw him under the bus. Tell me otherwise. I don't know how I lost weight, but I know that I had a boyfriend who was feeding me. That's a subliminal right there. Because she didn't take a self-accountability. She didn't say that I got here because I kept asking for food and my partner said no, and my partner would never reject me. She didn't say that. If she said that the guy, if she said that the partner, if she, if she said that Randy, the man that I just lost, kept feeding me each and every time I asked him food, there's a little bit of accountability from her there. A little bit. Still throw him under the bus, but at least she's acknowledging that it was her who was in charge. It was her who was behind the wheel, if you dig what I'm saying. But instead of saying that, she was just saying, yeah, Randy used to come and feed me, innit? He used to do everything for me, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, whatever, man. End of the day, I have no sympathy for this woman. If you do, then good. Then, then you're a better person than me, or you're just more delusional than I am. <laughs> Sorry, I have no idea what I'm doing myself. Anyway, it's been one hell of a roller coaster, one hell of a roller coaster of an episode. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section, but goddamn. <sighs> like, subscribe, peace.